Hey everybody, Andrew Fantasia here. Welcome back to Digital Charcuterie. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are spending our time here looking over the campaign for DC Superheroes United, and we're going to talk about it, as always, and get caught up to speed with what has been revealed. Uh, of course, off the top, all the liking, all the subscribing, all the bells, all the books. These books, We Were Wizards, the books that I wrote. If you like fantasy, you can get these on Amazon right now. There's a second one, too. Woo! Got this one too. This one's equally as good. I'm biased, but you know. And just a quick few words before we get into it. I just wanted to say uh, thank you to everybody uh, who commented last uh, last time on the last video. Just how much I appreciated the kind words uh, you all had for me uh, as I go through all this this craziness right here with with uh, an unfortunate death in the family. Uh, you guys have been so supportive and so sweet. Uh, and I'm I'm super glad to have the chance to come here and talk to all of you about this crazy fun board game. Uh, so thank you, honestly, all of you for your your kind words because they meant so much and they truly made my day. So with that being said, let's take a look at the game found page and see what those maniacs over at Simon have done for us now. Oh boy. Okay, let's open this up and take a look. First of all, really nice box art. Um, I think they nailed the Suicide Squad look. Could have used a bit more purple. Uh, I don't know. I, I always associate the Suicide Squad with purple, but that's okay, because there's plenty of purple inside. Folks, for the first time in United history, we have a box full of nothing but Winky Pinky Poo Poo's. That's what they're called, right? Oh, no, that's right. They're called dual mode characters this time. Wow. This is the most purple thing I've ever seen, and royal purple is my favorite color, by the way, so this uh, this really strikes a chord for me. This is the Suicide Squad expansion, which comes with those characters. Sorry, I'm going all over the place here. Harley Quinn, King Shark, Bloodsport, who is looking like the uh, villain from the Acolyte with that Darth Smiley kind of thing he's got going on. Rick Flag, Peacemaker, and my favorite, Polka Dot Man. I cannot stress how much I was looking forward to Polka Dot Man. And as we scroll down, we've got the Suicide Squad mode, uh, so they can be faced just like the Sinister Six. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, and they've got their own their own mission cards there, so it's a little bit different from Sinister Six. And then the other components, including four locations, team deck, a challenge card, and five nano bomb cards. Oh my gosh. Okay, and then this whole giant checklist of things that come in this box. This is going to be a heavy box. All right, Suicide Squad mode. Let's take a look. Famously, the characters in this expansion were brought together to form the Suicide Squad, a special task force of villains set loose on the sword of nefarious heists a group of proper heroes would never agree to. With the Suicide Squad mode, heroes can take on these six villains acting together in a very different and intense play experience. Oh, wow. In this mode, instead of the heroes trying to complete missions, it is the villains that have their own missions to complete in order to accomplish their suicidal heist. That's cool. Hire manpower, take hostages, and gather intel. Thugs are hired and civilians are taken hostage in several ways, whether by causing overflows or using each villain's bam effect. The villains gather intel by systematically collecting all six alien artifact threat cards placed around the locations. While this does free up the location effects for the heroes to use, it means the Suicide Squad is one step closer to fulfilling their goals. Oh my god, that's perfect. That is a perfect way to implement the Suicide Squad. Uh, so their master plan deck is quite different from the usual. Each card lists members of the Suicide Squad in different order, and players will activate the first two. Okay, yep, so it's just like um, just like the Sinister Six. Uh, okay, so we can kind of go over... Uh, if you don't know how the Sinister Six works, that's how it works. It'll show everybody, but you just do what the first two villains uh, show. Uh, they each have their own health and ban. They attack the heroes in different ways. King Shark chomps hard at any unlucky hero caught next to him. Bloodsport fires a devastating shot straight across the play area. Harley Quinn deals out a few whacks of her mallet all around her, while Polka Dot Man showers his location with lethal dots. Lethal. Dots. Rick Flag is a straightforward brawler. Meanwhile, Peacemaker uses his helmet to neutralize the hero's ability to attack. Of course, if the locations where the villains act are free of heroes, they take that chance to hire thugs or take civilians hostage in a variety of ways. The villains never become under pressure in Suicide Squad mode. However, in order to attack them, the heroes must find each villain's weak spot before they can be damaged. To do so, they must spend the specific actions required by each villain. Only once that's done, that villain can be attacked directly. The heroes will need to take down all six members of the Suicide Squad before they can complete all of their heist missions or before their master plan is completed and the villain turns are accelerated whenever a hero is KO'd. Okay, <laughs> that is insane. And then we have this feature, Villain Tag Teams, which is brand new 
This is not a thing that has existed before. Individually, the villains in this set are not exactly dark side level threats to the heroes, so when they're not united in full Suicide Squad mode, they team up with another accomplice, so together they stand a chance at overpowering any group of heroes that tries to stop them. All villains in this expansion have a two-sided half-villain dashboard. On one side has them as the main villain, while the other side has them as the accomplice villain. During setup, players choose any combination of two different villains to face together. One is the main villain, the other is the accomplice. Their master plan cards are shuffled together into a single deck. Ah, and their threat cards are distributed randomly among the locations. Very interesting. Totally unprecedented, so we can see here it is half a dashboard. It's really more just like a villain card. And there's Peacemaker's half, and there's King Shark's half. So King Shark would be the accomplice in this case. So if you're like me and you play randomly, if Peacemaker's name comes up, this is what you would do. You would grab his half where he's the main villain, and then randomly select another Suicide Squad member to be the uh, accomplice. Wow, okay. So I'm not bummed that they're not full villains, because I do love getting those full villain dashboards. They make me so excited. But I like this. This is a new, interesting way to do it. I think I'm okay with it, because at the end of the day, this box is still giving you seven different villain options, right? It's giving you all six individual characters, plus Suicide Squad mode as a seventh villain. So yeah, the variety still exists here. Yeah, so the combo, these villain duels offer 30 different play experiences. That's, that's great. So here are the characters. Harley Quinn with her big pow hammer. And uh, yeah, that's exactly how we kind of figured her thing would look. Her cards are great. Mayhem in your and adjacent locations defeat one thug or discard one civilian there. Interesting. Discard one civilian, not rescue. And that's, that's thematic. She doesn't really rescue people too much. She comes with her mallet and those half dashboards. Amazing. As a hero, Harley Quinn is a chaotic force to reckon with. She spreads mayhem, knocking down thugs all around her, though civilians may occasionally get discarded in the process. Her charged card makes her immune to toxins, so she can flip it to ignore a crisis token. A trained psychologist, Harley is able to get close to the villain and get into their head, revealing their next master plan. Wicked! And if she's KO'd, she then makes an unexpected appearance, popping up anywhere and immediately attacking. That is different. I have not seen that before. All right, and then as a villain, she's going to use a special formula created with the help of a special friend to confuse the hero's senses and bring them under her control. She gives crisis tokens to all heroes around her unless they sacrifice a card to resist it. That forces them to play their card randomly and then give Harley the token. All right, so they're definitely going for, I don't know which version of Harley this is with this outfit. It's a mix between the Suicide Squad movie and a little bit of what looks like Arkham uh knight or something i don't know but that, that's a, a cool mix i really do like when harley quinn is in black and red uh when they start throwing her in the crazy colors i'm like eh, I, I like the black and red better uh so that is great blood sport looking fantastic i forgot this guy existed but there you go we don't have heimdall in marvel but now we have blood sport so we do get idris elba all right he's got marksmanship uh, his special rules and all that. There's a lot going on on these, and I do want to try to breeze through this and make it not too long of a video, but you can kind of freeze frame those if you want to see what he does. Uh, oh, damage dealt to heroes in this location is unpreventable. That's not nice. Bloodsport is, is an extremely aggressive hero with attacks on practically every card. With uncanny marksmanship, he can deal a devastating hit anywhere on the play area. His tactical mind also allows him to divert thugs being added around him to other locations, and if he happens to be KO'd, his charged last shot ensures he can fire back before going down. As a villain, Bloodsport is out for blood. Well, obviously, dealing out an inordinate amount of damage to any hero caught anywhere near him. Even each overflowing token fires a shot across the play area. His threats place heroes under the crossfire, making his damage unpreventable. And yeah, look right there. Look at that. Bam. Deal two damage among heroes in Bloodsport's location and one damage to one hero in each adjacent location. So two damage among heroes isn't so bad. So you kind of want to follow him around uh, or, or not. But I mean, if you'd rather not be alone with him is what I mean. If you are caught in his space, it would be nice to have a friend. Peacemaker, John Cena has made it into the game. Uh, <laughs> that's a great picture of him just pointing, telling his eagle where to go. Let's see what this peacemaking card does at the end of a turn in which he would in which you were KO'd, flip this card to attach a stunned token to a villain or henchman in your or an adjacent location. And he comes with his helmet that lets you punch twice against a single target. And there is his villain dashboard. So he's going to be giving people crisis tokens. As a hero, Peacemaker will pursue peace at any cost. Mainly, this means using his mastery of any weapon to double the attacks he gets from other heroes in order to take out as many enemies as possible. His covert operations training also enables him to redirect damage he would suffer to nearby enemies. However, maybe his greatest asset is his pet eagle, Eagly. 
<laughs> that's actually his name, which he can send flying to adjacent locations or on rescue or strike missions. And if Peacemaker happens to be KO'd, he may first guarantee some peace by stunning a nearby enemy. The special helmet Peacemaker can equip may look a little dorky, but it is capable of dealing a devastating blow to any enemy in the vicinity. Then as a villain, he's going to do all he can to keep the heroes from fulfilling their missions. When he bams, all heroes around him lose a couple of actions to the effect of his helmet, unless they take some damage to resist it. And his threats deal further damage to all heroes caught in them. Peacemaker gets a crisis token for each incomplete mission, and to make things worse, he removes tokens from incomplete missions whenever someone's KO'd. That's nasty. Eagly the Eagle has made it into the game, too. I think we're definitely... It's... Almost definitely safe to say we're not getting a pets expansion, and I'm okay with that. I am totally okay with that. I'd rather have them as heroes like Crypto and Gleek. But, oh, here he is. Here he is, the Wonder Bread Man himself. This is, I'm so happy this is here. I, you have no idea. Look, he's standing on a bunch of polka dots. His cards are colorful because it's all his dots. Uh, defeat up to two thugs in your location with this hidden weapons card. Oh, man. I, I, I gotta know what he does. All right, Polka Dot Man makes for an unusual but quite resourceful hero. He can shower his location with his Polka Dots, defeating a few thugs at a time, or he can produce a giant dot that can be used for several purposes, from blunt weapon to hover disc. And if he happens to be KO'd, he may learn from the experience and come back better prepared, getting a free wild token. Oh, that's neat. While Polka Dot Man may look a little ridiculous, heroes really should take this villain quite seriously. His Polka Dots, bam, deals just about the most devastating localized attack in the game, to all heroes caught in his location. Oh, I see a deal two damage thing here. His overflows are equally deadly, with each extra token representing a dot that hits heroes in multiple locations. In the end, Polka Dot Man just wants to finish his plan quickly and get out of there. He goes around activating his threats, which give him crisis tokens. When he accumulates enough, or when a hero is KO'd, he gets to add extra face down master plan cards to the storyline so his plan can come to an end in no time. Oh man, I do not paint, but this is really making me want to paint Polka Dot Man. And then King Shark, my second favorite Suicide Squad member. Look at this big guy. He's just a big old guy. Taste for meat. Discard one thug or one civilian from your location. If you do, draw one card. Oh my god, he's eating people! Oh, that is so on brand. And he's going to be dealing two damage to one here. Wow, these they hit hard. These guys really hit hard. They said that these guys are no dark side level threats, but I don't know, man. So King Shark is a shark. That said, King Shark is also quite a questionable hero. He attacks hard and often taking big chunks of his enemies in a single bite. Having developed a taste for meat, King Shark has the nasty habit of discarding thugs or civilians down his gullet to gain a card. King Shark can also use his position as a crime boss in Atlantis to send a couple thugs anywhere to sleep with the fishes. hey -o. Also getting a hit on Henchman. And if he ever is KO'd, he only comes back stronger, drawing an additional card. As a villain, his appetite for expanding the criminal operations are in full force. He circles the play area, chomping at heroes and spreading his thugs all around him. And sea mobsters are harder to take down than your garden variety thug. Yes, they are. KOing heroes puts blood on the water, triggering further bams in a vicious cycle, so thematic, with overflows giving him crisis tokens. Uh, and then as an accomplice, he uses his overflowing thugs to contribute to the main villain's objective. Oh, God, that makes me happy. Rick Flag, probably the most boring guy in this box. He's just a guy, right? He's just like, hey, what's up? I'm a guy. Uh, but I like his uh, his logo here with the green beret on the skull. Firearms Master, gain one punch token. The first punch token you spend this turn allows you to punch twice instead. Well, that's handy. And there's his dashboard and all of his goodies. As a hero, he puts his military training to good use. Years of leading the Suicide Squad gives him the leadership skills necessary to give his teammates any action token they may need. As a weapon specialist, he not only gains attack tokens for himself, but can use them twice as well as anybody. If he sets up his charge card, he can make sure that if he goes down, he's taking his enemy with him, gaining an attack tokens after being KO'd. And he may not be strictly a villain, but by following Amanda Waller's orders, he becomes one. He's out to fulfill his mission quickly and efficiently, no matter what it takes, even using his accomplice as protection, so he can't be damaged until they have been dealt with. And then the locations. Many of the locations in this set are bad, are as bad as the characters in it, rather, with permanent mandatory negative effects that make the hero's life harder. So add them at your own risk. Cool. The Suicide Squad base of operations is the, in the Bell Reef Prison facility is not a welcoming place, forcing heroes to start their turn there to play their card randomly. But it can be useful to sacrifice a card there to gain any two action tokens you want. Being allowed passage into Quarto Maltese will cost you an action token if you have any. This makes me very happy because I am Maltese. I have a Maltese background. My family is from the island of Malta. So the fact that this is a location now, I might be using this in every damn United game I play if I get this thing. Oh boy, that's great. And then there's Blackgate Penitentiary, which is also doing bad stuff, and Sanctuary, which thankfully is just a mental health facility, a safe place for you to rest and recover. I think that is from Heroes in Crisis. 
which was a great story. And then the Nanobombs challenge, which I love the idea of this. So if you want the full Suicide Squad experience, you add this challenge to your game with a micro-explosive inserted in your head and the remote detonator in the merciless hands of Amanda Waller. You better do exactly as you're told and do it quickly, or else pop. Any hero taking on the challenge shuffles a random nanobomb card into the bottom half of their deck. When that card shows up at the top of the deck, it is immediately revealed. The hero then has until the end of their turn to accomplish whatever the card tells them to do. Otherwise, they are unceremoniously eliminated from the game. You might be told to do some crowd control, or secure a threat, or perform specific actions around the villain in order to infiltrate the organization, sabotage them, or perhaps do some cleanup for Task Force X. Giving first priority to this may get in the way of accomplishing your greater goals, but then again, what greater goal is there compared to keeping your head? That is probably the most thematic challenge I have ever seen in a United game, and that's saying a lot, because their challenges are really good. I really want to try that nanobomb thing. And then, of course, they got themselves a team deck. It includes all of the Suicide Squad characters, including Katana, Wildcat, The Question, I did not know he was part of this, Batgirl, and Steel, Ditto, and possibly others. That is, mm, that is naughty, Simon. I think I smell some Deathstroke in our future. Is he part of this? No, not Deathstroke. Deadshot. The Suicide Squad team deck reinforces the team's missions and modus operandi. Heroes can take a hit in order to perform any task they need to, and when they are inevitably KO'd, they can allow another to draw a card. And what's their what's their bad thing? However, the heroes may find themselves more expendable than they bargained for, being eliminated and replaced if they are KO'd, which only accelerates the villain's plan. Oh my god. So that's their bad card. If you get KO'd, Amanda Waller blows you up and replaces you. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that Amanda Waller does not yet, at least yet, exist in this game, like there's no miniature of her, there's not even an image of her, but the fact that they have already worked her into this box with the way these modes function, what a designing masterclass this is. So if you want to add that to your pledge, there you go, my friends, add away. And then down here... Uh, that helped unlock Cyborg Superman. It sure did. And then we got these brand new things, ally behavior cards. So this is really interesting. I've never seen these before. While DC Superheroes and it can be played by a single player controlling a single hero using the commander solo mode, people may like to instead play it solo by controlling two heroes themselves and using the standard rules. The ally mode brings a new twist to playing the game this way, introducing a deck of cards that help guide the behavior of your ally hero. It can even be used by two or three players if they like to have an extra virtual player join them. If playing solo, this game is played in two-hero mode with the player controlling one hero normally and the other hero is their ally hero. At the start of each ally hero turn, the player first reveals the top ally behavior card following its instructions to guide how that hero resolves their turn. Uh, that's interesting. I guess if you really just don't want to think for more than one hero, you can throw that in. I feel like that would actually make it harder if you were soloing the game. I might try it. Just, I'm like, I still don't know if I'm getting this, but I might try it. Um, but I don't think I would use it often. And then here we are with this handsome fella, Arm Falloff Boy, who himself was part of the Suicide Squad in the movie, and he can detach his arms just like the character. Uh, wow. This means this figure will have detachable arms. He may drop an arm in his location and then discard cards to perform actions in a location where one of his arms is. He may even tear an arm off and throw it at an adjacent location so he can act there. It's a bit of a gruesome sight, but it gets the job done. And don't worry, whenever he walks into one of his arms, he can reattach them to his body and heal himself. Uh, this is just stunningly great. Th- this, <laughs> Wow. I mean, th- you know what this is, folks? This is a cherry. And it's very fitting that this gem in his head looks like a cherry. Suicide Squad was a delicious giant ice cream sundae that they put in front of us today. And this guy is the cherry on top of that sundae. And then jumping to Tuesday. Now it's Tuesday. And early this morning, we unlocked Arms Fall Off Boy. And now, waiting in line to be unlocked is Mr. Deadshot, our first purple stretch goal. And boy, is it nice to start seeing these purple characters roll out after a long time coming. There's Deadshot. We now have a Will Smith United character, and he's probably wondering, uh, as he sees all of this stuff unlocked, Will Smith is probably turning to the designers at Simon and Spin Master and saying, so what, you expect us all to just work together like some kind of DC Superheroes United? 
<laughs> I apologize for that joke, but you know what? It was teed up for me. Uh, there's Marksmanship. Uh, that's a card that shot has three punches against a single target in any location. I mean, if you guys have played Arkham City, you know how dangerous Deadshot can be. He is a very overlooked Batman villain. Now, I kind of breezed past it, but look up here. Look what's up here. This, folks, is a little piece that allows him to be added to the Suicide Squad. We see it right here. One Suicide Squad module. It's not quite what they did with Sinister Six. This is just sort of an extra character to slap on top of one of the other ones. But hey, I think we're all happy with it. So when you get the services of an assassin to help take out a villain, I guess he can be considered a hero. In any case, Deadshot's marksmanship is legendary, being able to land a shot just about as devastating as anything in the game, no matter where his target may be. But he's not just about sniping from a distance. Deadshot can also evade blows in close combat and use demolitions to completely raise a location, with little care for who might be there. And if he's KO'd, he comes back with a vengeance, opening fire as soon as he gets up. So as a regular conscript of Task Force X, he can be used when playing with the Suicide Squad team deck in the expansion. Great. I think first time we've had confirmation of a character being added uh, after the fact to a team deck that's already been announced. I could be wrong. And then as a villain, it talks about him quickly trying to get through his master plan. So he's keeping his distance. He's sniping like we saw, putting traps down. This sniper's nest threat up here is pretty cool. When he bams, if he's in this location, he deals one damage to one hero in any location. It's bad enough he's going to hit you with his big bam, but that sniper's nest is going to get more. That shot also comes with a module that can be placed on the Suicide Squad dashboard included in that expansion, as well as his own weak spot card. So he can substitute one of the villains in that special multi-villain mode. Deadshot brings his lethal accuracy to the Suicide Squad, firing devastating shots across the play area. All right. Well, it is nice to finally have a purple character in here. As the day went on, as I go over here to the accessories, they announced something that we all knew was coming eventually, which is the cardboard locations and cardboard villain dashboards. I will admit, these are something I have always liked in Marvel, but I've just never gotten around to getting them. I think it would be cool to have cardboard locations and dashboards, but they are... They're not even expensive, really. They're only $30, but it's already an expensive game, so I always opted out with Marvel. I mean, these kind of look like more of the same thing. So if I get DC Superheroes United, I don't think I'll be getting these either, unfortunately. They are rather easy to find on, on uh, the aftermarket. They, you know, they, they go to retail, but they do get marked up a bit too, so it's, I don't know, I play a lot. So having cardboard things would be nice just for durability, but uh, I got to draw a line somewhere. But what I really like is what they say here where they reveal some things. First of all, that retail exclusive core box is going to have eight location tiles. Now, if that retail exclusive core box, which we don't know anything about yet, if that were to have had the same locations as the regular core box right here, then we wouldn't be seeing this. The cardboard locations wouldn't print the same location twice, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but because this is eight very separate locations, that retail exclusive core box is going to be super different. It really is sounding more and more like spider Geddon now. Oh, man, I'm curious what that's going to be. And then 11 location tiles yet to be revealed. So we are 11 away from revealing all the locations in this campaign. That means, you know, probably three more boxes. If my math is right, you know, you stick three or four in a box and boom, there you go. You got 11 locations. And the same kind of tantalizing hint was dropped in the cardboard villain dashboards thing. Another beautiful accessory that I would love to get. If I was loaded, I would. But with Marvel, I, I always opted out of these two just to save a little bit of cash. But man, they must be nice. It must be really nice to just crack open this and just have a nice sturdy villain dashboard. Here we go as we look at this. Again, we are seeing tantalizing hints. The retail exclusive core box is going to have three villain dashboards. Once again, if it was just a repeat, you know, if that core box also had Joker and it was the exact same Joker, they wouldn't print it in here. They wouldn't give you a, two different cardboard versions of the same Joker playmat. So whatever's in that core box, there's going to be at least three unique villains in it. That blows my mind. And then to top it off, the stretch goals have 20, over 20 villain dashboards for the stretch goals. 20 plus. And I counted, right now we have 14 villain characters in the stretch goals, and that's including Deadshot. So that means we can look forward to at least six more red or purple stretch goals in the near future. And down here, 15 plus villain dashboards yet to be revealed. Whatever boxes may be coming our way, there are at least 15 villains total 
cram into those boxes. Man, that is exciting. I mean, the villains are my favorite part of this, and I'm sure I'm not alone in that. And if Arkham Asylum is a thing, which I'm fairly certain we can all breathe easily that it will be, and if it has six characters, just like Sinister Six did, that means there's six villains in that box. 15 minus six is nine. So that means there's nine more villains in whatever other boxes we get total. Uh, and if we only get three other boxes, those that's still, uh, that's quite a bit of villains. And I, I, I don't know where I got that number from, three other boxes. I'm just kind of assuming we would get one on Friday, this coming Friday, one next Monday, and then the final one that following Friday. Uh, we are in for some jam-packed goodness. That's the moral of the story. And that's the ball game, at least for now. Uh, we've got another week and a bit left in this campaign. Um, I am at teaching camp all this week, so I'm not going to be here for the Friday live stream at noon. I'll be at work, but uh, I'll be covering stuff in the evening to the best of my ability uh, as we sit here and continue to watch the stuff roll in as we keep on hoping and praying to make the wait for Marvel United Multiverse a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. So thanks again, everybody. I will see you here next time. And until then, adios.